I'm Rick Byros, a uh, publisher of Food Safety Tech. We uh, just concluded the Food Labs conference here at PitCon, and I'm here with Claudia Bowser from SGS. Um, Claudia, we have seen the GFSI uh, and, the, and the acceptance of GFSI rise over the years um, to the point where it was made mostly large companies, then mid-sized companies, and now it's got the attention of small companies. And small companies don't have a lot of resources. They, uh, a lot of people wear many different hats at small companies. Mm -hmm. How, where do they begin to look at GFSI? How do they choose what scheme that would be appropriate for them? Where, where, where would you direct, how would you advise well, small companies? Well, the, the, the process begins a lot of times with the actual clients of these smaller companies requesting that this type of um, mm -hmm. audit. Uh, it used to be in the past that you were required to have an audit of, of some sort. And it's funny because they used to go by the name of the companies. You know, you had AIB, you had Siliker, you had, sure. uh, you know, the other ones. And then uh, as GFSI starts to develop, there's, there's more opportunities for, for more standards to get uh, their own kind of foothold in the GFSI world. Uh, there's no longer a, a an AIB or a Siliker audit. It's, it's a GFSI being an SQF, an FSSC, or a uh, BRC audit. Mm -hmm. uh, so the process begins a lot of times there. And then companies do this out of their own initiative so because they want to be able to have safe product and they want to use it as what I always say the, the, the GFSI scheme is, which is a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. It's a marketing tool to grow your business uh, on the food safety side to whatever level you want to. Once you get into a GF GFSI scheme, you have a hunting license to go sell your product anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. Great.